Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the Coach Everett Withers Show. It's time now to talk about James Madison University Dukes football with their head coach, Everett Withers. I'm Kurt Dudley. Well, let's take you to the end of the ball game. Another dramatic finish for the Dukes on the road at the University of Albany as the Dukes for the first time went into the state capital of New York. And a 34-yard field goal by, let's say, little-known Ryan Maglio wins it for the Dukes 31-28. to And Coach, first of all, we understand that uh, Mr. Maglio was maybe not even going to be playing for the Dukes going into that ball game. Well, yeah, Kirk, about a week earlier, uh, Ryan had come in my office and as a, as a walk-on uh, kid. Ryan's really trying to get into graduate school, uh, actually into law school. And uh, he's got another year of eligibility, but he really wanted to focus on getting his grades up uh, so he can get into law school. And we sat down and talked, and I said, you, you know, you're, you're a very talented young man. You kick the ball well. I said, I wouldn't give up on this thing real fast. And uh, he went out that Sunday and kicked it well and, and did the same thing on Tuesday at practice, and we elevated him to our starting play, place kicker. Yeah, so he comes up the 34-yard field goal, but it wasn't the first try. It was actually the second. Yeah. And another very, talk about intellectual, intellectual player in Blaine Stewart, of course, who has grown up the son of a coach, the late Bill Stewart, certainly knew the game going in. Yeah, uh, there were 10 seconds left. We had talked it in the huddle with the PAT field goal team uh, and told Blaine that, uh, you know, obviously you've got two downs here. Uh, so if you have a bobble snap and any kind of exchange issue, just take the ball and, and ground it at a, uh, an eligible guy. And Blaine knew that going in, so he was uh, on top of it. And, you know, we left 10 seconds on the clock so we could do that if that uh, became the, the situation. And uh, Blaine A executed it well. All right, again, 31-28 was the final. Let's go back to the beginning of the game and uh, really some adversity that you had to overcome because yeah. you lose your defensive captain, basically, your quarterback in Dean Marlowe. They uh, said it was, uh, I guess, a a helmet to helmet yeah. hit, but upon review, he was ejected from the game, but upon review, uh, you saw it a little differently. Yeah, we actually got an, an end zone copy. We've got a shot from a back angle uh, and, and actually saw the Dean uh, hit the young the, the receiver in the strike zone, which they call the, you know, right around the shoulder pads down uh, to the waist uh, with his shoulder and not with his helmet. So, uh, you know, obviously we turned those things in. There was no replay at the game. It's one of the things I think our conference needs to improve on, uh, making sure everybody's got replay uh, uh, facilities. But uh, uh, we had to play the game with, with three freshmen in the uh, secondary. But uh, those kids, they played hard for us. It's interesting. Uh, we did have the replay in the Delaware game, but it was experimental. Right. We won't have the replay this week right. when the Dukes host Towson. Getting back to last week's game, Dean Marlowe does go out, and then Marcel Johnson, yep. another one of these finds of yours from your home state of North Carolina, comes in and, and settles things in, ends up with uh, 14 tackles on the day. Well, Marcel's uh, obviously a true freshman, uh, you know, has 14 tackles, four uh, solo, 10 assists, and he also had a, uh, a sack and a calls fumble. So uh, he did some nice things for us. Uh, uh, he's obviously a young kid and uh, learning on the run, but he's one of those guys that you love to recruit at this level. He's, you know, a 6'2 kid, uh, probably around 195 pounds, runs well, was on a very successful track team uh, at his high school and uh, was going to be one of those guys that one day you're going to read a lot about. Well, the Dukes said they got down early, 7 to nothing, but then you rip off 21 consecutive points, and the second quarter, really, even though we talk about the field goal, going back to the second, right. that may have been where you won the ball game, yeah. and even though you did have the block punt, overcoming that True. was big because oftentimes when you have a, uh, a punt blocked, you're going to lose the ball game. Yeah, well, we had, to, we had to block punt, and then uh, they were able to drive the ball down, but we did a nice job with the goal line stance there, and, and our defense did, did a tremendous job getting momentum them back and then after the uh, the goal line uh, stand down there we drove the ball 99 yards so uh, that was a huge momentum uh, getter for us as a team and it helped us uh, start moving the ball and doing things the way we wanted to do it. Is, I'm seeing still more examples of your offense uh, with the capability of either A striking quickly yeah. as you did on the long run by Vad Lee the 57 yarder or driving the length of the field as you mentioned 99 yards and 17 plays. Right. What, what are the keys in those drives where you get uh, you had one at Lehigh as well. Yeah, well, uh, our kids understanding the offense and understanding the plan of the offense, uh, we got ourselves in some situations with two penalties in that drive that put us behind the chains, and uh, we were able to convert some third downs in that drive that were critical, and we knew we, were have to, we would have to do that. We wanted to run the ball on that drive. We wanted to be able to, to play action pass some on that drive, and we were successful executing those 
plays. And uh, once we got the ball out into, you know, that midfield area, we felt like we could strike, and, and we did. We were able to strike for, for a big touchdown pass. Uh, your, your offense, you wanted to go in rushing the football. You yeah. were going against one of the top rushing defenses in the country, right. averaging just 72 yards per game, but yet you tripled that. How is that so? In fact, you kind of had three MVPs out of that. Well, we did. Our running backs did an, did an unbelievable job. We challenged our running backs. We challenged our receivers. We challenged our own line because we knew going into the game, we, we didn't know about the weather situation. We knew we were going to have to run the football. And uh, our running backs, uh, we, we talked about this at the, at the, uh, at the press conference that uh, with, we had 82%, okay, uh, of, of tackle, excuse me, uh, uh, run after contact. And that was unbelievable for us to do that in the ball game. And we challenged those guys. Those guys did a nice job with that. Yeah, a lot of times you talk about yards after the catch. Yeah. We don't hear many, many times the analysis of yards yeah. after contact for 82% yeah. just tremendous. And you said when you were coaching with the Titans in the NFL, 60% was a pretty good outcome. Yeah, that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good stat for, for an NFL team. So you having 82% after contact was huge. And we had three running backs, uh, Jawan Latney, uh, Khalib Abdul, and, and John Miller both uh, become MVPs for us in the ballgame. Uh, also, defensively, you wanted to stop the run. You were yeah. facing Omar Osborne, who led the league going in with 135 yards rushing. He finished with 129. Yeah. You kept him to one long run of 26, but at the most part, your defense stayed at home and did its job. Yeah, I, I thought we did a pretty good job of, of, of being at home and stopping the run. We gave up a couple runs there, but really nothing really long that, uh, you know, the explosive uh, that, that really, you know, got us uh, uh, out of what we wanted to do defensively. We gave up some passing game, but to us, we didn't feel like that they would beat us throwing the football. We felt like that the run game was what they wanted to do. You brought a little bit more pressure this week on yeah. first and second down than what you had in weeks past. Seems like even though Fiaki, Will Fiaki, did have a pretty good game throwing right. the ball, he was under duress a lot. Well, we wanted to blitz the run, but also blitz and pressure the play action pass, and we were able to do that. So we got some hits on the quarterback. Uh, Sage Harrow had another big day. You know, a number of guys got hits on the quarterback, and we feel like that that's, there's an effect on a quarterback if you continue to do that throughout the game and and uh, you know heads off to their quarterback he did a nice job of, of, of surviving it and playing through the game kind of gets lost but back-to-back -back weeks no turnovers right. for your team and that's a, that speaks volume particularly for as many youngsters have you had right. that you have in making these decisions well uh, you know you're right uh, anytime you go into a game and, and, and you, you know one of your goals is that we, we one of our plan to win goals is to protect and cherish the football and, and it's something we talk about every Friday and Saturday uh, before we play a game. And for our kids the last two weeks to really hone in, especially in a game that had some you know, rain possibilities to it, uh, for us to not have any turnovers, that was big. So, Coach, we're at the midterm in uh, kind of condensed it here quiz fashion, three mm -hmm. and three. Certainly you'd like for the record to be a little better, but it uh, looks like things are working in the direction that you'd like for them to go. Yeah, obviously you'd like to be you know, undefeated, but uh, that's not the case. But I feel like we're making some progress. Uh, what about, uh, def let's look at it, we'll break it down a little bit more. Defensively, uh, there have been some times sure. when things have, you've been giving up many more yards. Right. You've been active, though, in working with the outside linebackers for yeah. a couple of weeks now. Will that continue? Yeah, I think it will. I think it's been good. I've been really working with them really on Tuesdays and first and second down uh, when, they're actually, when we're actually in base defense a little bit more. When we get into in, in our nickel and dime packages, I'm usually not involved as much because they're usually more down rushers on those down and distances. So, yeah, that'll continue. I, I think we're making some progress defense. I just feel like we're being more aggressive in attacking. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, offensively uh, against um, Albany, you only ran 70 plays, but right. you don't seem to be too bothered by that. It doesn't really put your team under additional stress because right. you're not making 99 plays right. like you did the week before. Right. Well, uh, we knew going into the game that Albany was going to try to take the air out of the ball and uh, keep the ball away from our offense. Our, our mission is when we have the, the ball, we have to score points. And uh, we had three red zone opportunities. We scored in all three red zone opportunities for, uh, for the game. So that was crucial. And again, we didn't turn the ball over. We converted on 10 of uh, 17 on third down. So those are, those are critical uh, situations for us. So the Dukes, they get a second road win. This time it's at the University of Albany. 31-28 is the final. That sounds very familiar <laughs> to the Dukes win over Lehigh early in the season. We're going to take a time out here. Join us in just a few moments as we'll return here on the Everett Withers Show. Office products, we buy right so you can too. 
That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right. Hey, did you know Harrisonburg Nissan has the best selection of pre-owned cars in the Valley? With something for everyone. Best selection, locally owned, number one volume dealer, it all adds up. Check it out at HarrisonburgNissan.com. Clear to zip. Break a little. Good job. Game on. Hi, I'm Brandon Staley. I'm the defensive coordinator at James Madison University. I'm here to review the Albany game and some of our defensive highlights. I want to thank all the fans uh, from the great state of New York that were able to come to the game. It was a great team win against a nationally ranked team on the road. We just really appreciate all the support from all the fans and social media and uh, look forward to seeing you guys this week against Towson. The first play that we're going to show uh, was probably one of the big plays in the game for our whole team. Uh, it came after a block punt, which obviously is a big momentum swing. And uh, this was a fourth down and goal from the one. And so we've got our heavy personnel in the game. Uh, the Albany brought in uh, an extra tight end, and they've got two running backs in the game. So we matched personnel and have our goal line defense in the game. Uh, and if you'll notice right here, you'll notice that uh, we've got our big guys in, Alex Mosley, Xavier Gates, Simeon Robinson, uh, Brandon Lee, Sage Harold. We've got that group of five defensive linemen, and then we've got four linebackers in the game uh, to match personnel. We've got Asin Jock, uh, Titus Till, Gage Steele, and Kyrie Hawkins in the game uh, with Aaron Peake and Taylor Reynolds. So they get into a two-back set here all right, with an extra tight end. And, you know, before this play, they had taken a timeout. We had told them that they're probably going to go up and over. They're probably going to get low, submarine block, and then, you know, the running back jump over the top of the pile. So we told the second-level players to be ready for him to go up and over and match him uh, up and over the top. Uh, but the real key uh, to this play is the three defensive linemen. Their penetration, all right, their pad level, that's what allows this play to work. You'll see Alex does a great job on the tackle. Xavier really submarines the center. Simeon gets really good penetra penetration. And then what we're able to do here with Kyrie and Gage is we're able to meet the guy at the top of the pile and then push him back. There's no surge all right, on fourth and one, and that's what the offense is looking for. They're just looking for that little bit of surge to create some momentum for the running back, but they never get it because of the penetration, and then our second-level players swallow the back up all right, and knock them back, and there's no better feeling than getting a stop. That's like a takeaway on defense. That's a huge momentum swing, and our offense would end up going down on a 99-yard touchdown drive and score. So you're talking about a 14-point swing in the game, which really gave us you know, a lot of momentum. Good. Just looking at two uh, two highlights that we had offensively uh, in this week's uh, this week's Albany game. Uh, one of the one of the things that we wanted to do uh, early to uh, Albany was to give them a lot of different looks formationally uh, and see how they adjusted. One of the things that we did uh, specifically in this game uh, was we widened the splits of our three receivers uh, almost to an extreme all the way out here to the field. Normally, this dude is. Uh, split somewhere about four to five yards from the tackle, and now he's split about four to five yards outside the hash, uh, which causes some problems on defense. Somebody's got to go out there. There's always a threat that you can throw a bubble um, or something like that out there. So right here, we're just running inside zone, inside zone to the left, okay, up here. And uh, the quarterback's job is to read to see if simply do we have, do they have enough people to cover the bubble? Um, they have enough people to cover the bubble. Okay, they don't. So Levadier is going to pull it and throw it. Now he sees the, the strong safety coming fast, so that discourages him, okay? although it necessarily shouldn't have, okay? because Dean Cheatham is going to have a great cut block here okay? on the edge. So we would have had a play out here, but Levadier pulls it down. 
uh, and starts to run. Okay, one of the things he does best. Okay, what, the reason that I think this play uh, actually goes for a touchdown, okay, as you watch our offensive line up front, you're going to see him cave that whole left side in. Okay, and Vad gets his shoulders turned all the way all the way to the bubble. Okay, which is going to force all the linebackers to start to run because that ball is about to be completed all the way to the numbers and they don't have enough people. Okay, so they start to run. That gives uh, an athlete in space uh, uh, room to go. And uh, Vad does uh, one of the things he does best and runs and scores a touchdown for us early in the game to get us moving. You watch this from the tight copy, though, how we're blocking this thing. Okay, these, these five guys up front are simply blocking these five, and he's going to work through 94 to 33. So if we handed it off right here, we would have a play because 33 displaces himself. Okay, and we got everyone else blocked. Okay, but Lavadier gets his shoulders all the way around to throw the bubble right there, which forces all the linebackers to flow towards the bubble, and he runs past it. We get a block downfield from Ravenel and two scores. Well, once again, good education there with Chalk Talk here on the Everett Withers Show. Well, I remember his big game against the University of Richmond when he was a true freshman, and he's having several big games as a senior for the Dukes of James Madison. That's Sage Harold. Let's join our own Bridget Condon with more on this senior from Virginia Beach. Hi, I'm Bridget Condon from Madison HG Sportsnet with senior captain Sage Harold. As this is your last season, how have your expectations changed over the past four years? Previous years, if you was like if I was a sophomore, I wouldn't be able to get the games back if we didn't succeed or if I didn't do as good as I wanted to. Uh, so it being my senior year, I really want to focus more on just trying to get the job done as soon as possible, just trying to win. How hard is it for you to not let your passion get in the way of the game? Uh, I play with a lot of passion, so that 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 just motivates me more, and that allows me to uh, push my teammates harder. As one of the three captains, how do you influence your teammates when things are going bad as well as when things are going good? Uh, me being a player and a human being, I, I'd be frustrated too. But as a captain and a leader of the team, I try to pick the guys up as much as possible until the guys just give me all you got. And uh, at the end of the day, when we do everything execute right, we win. What has been your most memorable moment on or off the field here at JMU? Uh, man, my freshman year homecoming game. I was a true freshman playing, and we played Richmond, and uh, it was a lot of excitement going into the game. And I had finished the game with two and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and three tackles. And that was just like a big game for a freshman to come in and do that. And so that was like my biggest memorable part of my career here. What are your plans for after graduation? Uh, after graduation, I really hope to uh, have a chance to go to the NFL and play on the next level. If not, I'll be looking into law enforcement. The majority of this team this year is a lot of younger players compared to previous years that you've been on the team. How are you showing the younger players the ropes? Oh man, I just, I really just be myself. I'm not a real wild guy out in public and I really like to have fun when I play football. So I just let the guys know that football is still a game, man, but it's, it's, it's your life right now. Like, it's your life. This is something that you love to do. This got you to college and uh, just be passionate about it. Get emotional about it and just play hard as you can because it, it, it will be going fast. For Madison HG Sportsnet, I'm Bridget Condon. Thank you, Bridget, and thank you, Sage. Hopefully he has a good game against the Tigers on Saturday during Family Weekend. Well, coming up, speaking of family, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, well, a coaching family within the JMU coaching family itself on the Bowers after this time out on the Everett Withers Show. Did you know Harrisonburg Nissan is 24 years old and locally owned? Plus, you can shop from home 24-7 online with our express buying service. Check it out at HarrisonburgNissan.com. Give us a fighting chance. Get more of what your family wants from Entelos Wireless. Now share 10 gigs of data, unlimited talk and text on four lines for just $140 a month. 
Want even more? How about zero down on all smartphones? We'll even buy out your contract. More phones, more lines, and more data. Stand up and demand more. And tell us, wireless for the people. Office products, we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. Good job. Very good job. Game on. If you buy now at Harrisonburg Nissan, you won't have to make a payment till 2015. But don't tell anyone. If the word got out, everyone will be buying there. Check it out. HarrisonburgNissan.com Welcome back to the Everett Withers Show. Let's go back to the late 70s, early 80s with a young couple that were, well, student athletes here at James Madison University. One was a quarterback, the other a gymnast. Well, now they're married, but they're coaching one coast to the next. Let's join the Bowers here on the Everett Withers Show. I was a freshman when John was a senior, and then he stayed on for two years as a graduate assistant for the football team, and then we got married right when he graduated with his master's, and I still had one more year of college left. In December, right when my season's starting in January, he takes a job at Shepherd College in West Virginia and moves there. And my coach, Coach Kruger, he had never had a married athlete before, and he's like, look at me like, are you? I'm like, I'm married, I didn't die. The opportunity to come back where you went to school, uh, the self-pride that you already have instilled in your uh, for James Madison, and the things that how much how special it is a place, and how much it's changed, you know, in the 30 in the 34 years since I left here. Uh, but the the one thing that hasn't changed is the people. I've been around a lot of great people that have had a lot of influence on me as time continues to grow here and I think you have to be adaptable as an assistant and I think you have to uh, continue to work hard no matter what the circumstances are and, and, and get your players to do the same. Gymnastics is very expensive and all the traveling and all the lessons then all the meets and, and things like that. I think starting in junior high I started teaching a lot of the preschool classes, beginner classes stuff like that, to help with some of to offset some of the costs of my classes. Well, by the time I was in high school, I loved coaching. I think coaching is so much, you have to be a good teacher, but it's about the relationships, and it's all about the relationships. If you're gonna be a good recruiter, if you're gonna be a good coach, that's number one. And I think John's really good at that, and I think that's something we fed off of each other, of how'd you handle that, what'd you do this? It's, I always knew I wanted to coach, and I think John did too. I mean, if we couldn't play it, we wanted to coach it. She's uh, been, for me, just, uh, you know, more of a stay the course, don't panic, uh, keep, you know, keep working daily. And that's, I think that's how gymnastics, gymnastics is kind of that way, just because they're, you know, they're in the gym many more days than we're on the practice field. Um, but when I came back and I saw the stadium from 81 and the lights were on and I just went, oh my goodness, this looks big time. And I always say you choose your attitude and you choose how you live and stuff. So I always look at it as I'm going to look at the positive side and I'm going to find something good in it. And there usually is. That's John and Joanne Bowers and uh, she now tells him how to throw passes and every once in a while he tells her, well, go take a flip, why don't you? But we hope that you did enjoy that here. When we come back, Coach Everett Withers will rejoin us as we talk about the upcoming opponent, the Towson Tigers, here on the Everett Withers Show. Get more of what your family wants from Entelos Wireless. Now share 10 gigs of data, unlimited talk and text on four lines for just $140 a month. Want even more? How about zero down on all smartphones? We'll even buy out your contract. More phones, more lines, and more data. Stand up and demand more. Entelos, wireless for the people.
At Harrisonburg Nissan, right now, you can get 0% financing on select models. Hey, keep your money. Use Nissan. We'll honor and beat all buying service prices. We want your business. Check it out at HarrisonburgNissan.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Everett Withers Show. Time now to talk about the next opponent for the JMU Dukes. It's a program, well, that last year was in the national championship game against North Dakota State, but came up shy. And we're talking about the Towson Tigers winning 13 games last year, Coach. And no, you were busy at Ohio State. Get it? Didn't get that much of a chance to kind of keep an eye on the Tigers last year. But uh, one guy that certainly stood out that they no longer have, though, is Terrence West, now playing for the Cleveland Browns, but uh, they've got another youngster that's filling in pretty well for them, Darius Victor. Yeah, Darius is a you know small, compact back, uh, does a nice job of running uh, the ball inside. They want to be a run team. They want to run the power. Uh, they want to get in 12, 21, and 11 personnel, run the football, and then pass out of those formations and those personnel groups. But uh, that's what they want to be. Uh, Coach Ambrose is an offensive guy. Uh, he's done a really good job of uh, – that's his alma mater. He's come back. He's done a really nice job of, of developing that program. Uh, they're a little young at some spots, like, you know, some of us are. Uh, but uh, I, th I think he's doing a good job in, in growing that program. This team is seeming to struggle on offense, though, mm -hmm. because they're only getting about 17 and a half points a game. And uh, they're also struggling tremendously on third down. What have you right. seen on the tape? Well, I, I think when you get in third and long, uh, you're going to struggle. If that's your, your, your MO, if you're in third and seven plus a lot, then it, you tend to not convert on those down in distances. You want to be in third manageable, which we call third manageable, third and three, two, one. Uh, to be uh, successful in third down. I think it's, you know, trying to get their run game going uh, is going to be important, so we have to, you know, guard against that uh, and also not giving up play action passes on first down. So, you know, if we can hold them that, hopefully we can keep them in the third and long situation. They're only picking up about 289 yards total offense a game. You're getting almost 200 more. But as we flip it on the other side of the field, what are you seeing from them defensively? Well, I think they're very, they're very talented on defense. They have some big, long uh, guys up front. Uh, they want to stop the run on defense. Uh, they have given up some some passes down the field, but uh, I think they, their MO is a lot like ours. They want to make sure you stop the run, and then they'll take care of the back end uh, as the game proceeds. The keys for you against the Towson Tigers? Well, much like last week, we have to be able to run the football to be successful so we can do things in the passing game. And then obviously on defense, we've got to stop a very talented running back. All right. The Dukes and the Towson Tigers. It's family weekend at Bridgeport Stadium. Kickoff will be 1230. For Coach Everett Withers, I'm Kurt Dudley. Thank you for joining us this week on the Coach Everett Withers Show.